one of our old farm tractors, my son restored it. It came over on lease and lend in 1940. We pensioned it off and uh, my son said, uh, what are you doing with the tractor? We had took all of them. And uh, I said, why? He said, well, I should like to restore it. So I had a word with my brother and we gave it him and made a wonderful job of it. It attended <laughs> most of the shows late last year. Uh, now, uh, there's a game on for you. I can still name all the people on there. The Chardelot fire engine. Uh, we had a stack fire in the early part of the 19s. First of all, they couldn't catch the horse. Then they couldn't find the key to get the fire engine out. Eventually, they got down to the fire. They ripped the hose out down to the canal, which is quite close. Started pumping. Somebody tread on the, trod on the hose and the hose <laughs> burst. But the fire went merrily on, but I suppose they meant well. <laughs> uh, an early farming one, uh, that's my brother on the left, the cowman next to him, father sitting on the sweet seat. Uh, Harry Williams and Ted Archer, the horses, that one's captain, and Tommy is just out the picture, it's a two-horse tweet. Uh, quite modernising really, but they're hard work. And of course, the first of the tractors that came into Charlotte was a Henry Ford model. Uh, I still want the receipt for it. <laughs> 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 Uh, we hadn't the proper trailers, so we were using the horse wagon, my brother and the cowman's on top, and we had an evil machine at the back that picked the hay up and whisked it up, and you wanted about six on top, until we got to our local thrashing contractor, and of course, gone are the days now when you have to tie the pull up in sheaves, load it, stack it, have this, that thrashed the wheat out and the dust from those things was incredible. But that's uh, 1937. Mm. Steam engine driving it. Now, back to the canals. The small building on the left there was the ticket office. Now you could get a ticket there and get a passenger boat to anywhere where the canal went. Now, in the nine, 1905, 20 boats a week, passenger boats a week, were calling here at Charlotte. Roads obviously were abysmal, truthfully, and the old stagecoaches, you rattled along, but uh, you see, wonderful in the canal, there's no ruts in the canal, no shaking, and of course the passenger boats had undisputed right of way. Most of them carried a side blade on the bow, so if the working boat didn't drop its lines, it was cut. And they had three and four horses on, and they were towed at the canter, doing ten, ten miles an hour and a very comfortable way to strapping. They'd all got cookers on boards and you could have your breakfast as you were travelling to where you were going. Uh, Zachary Smith's old brewery there, we had two breweries in the village. This was India Pale Ales. Uh, he lived at Broughton House. You'll see a picture of it lately. And, uh, he'd, uh, no relatives whatsoever, so when he died in 1918, he left the whole of the business to be shared out between all his employees. Mm. Unfortunately, we lost our little humpback bridge, but you see in the mid-30s it was grossly inadequate to carry the traffic of that era. Because bear in mind, 1936, 
Donington Racetrack was well in its heyday, and uh, you talk about traffic queuing, on Saturdays when the race was run, Dad would not let me out on the road with a horse and cart because the traffic was queuing to Olveston six miles away. Mm -hmm. Uh, the oldest warehouse in the port is that one. That's a river warehouse, not a canal warehouse. And uh, as I say, when they built the road up to keep the river, the River Trent is only just about there. To keep the water to the River Trent out the canal, they built this road up. And of course, the road on this side you enter that building at first floor level, there's the ground floor level, and tucked in the corner there is the boatman's loo, a two-seater wooden loo, and we also <laughs> had a two-seater at the uh, other end of the village. Now, it's rather funny, uh, with the, every lock had a lock house and a lock keeper, and of course, to keep old fields, there was a coal wharf here. You see them loading the boat into the horse and cart, uh, the coal into the horse and cart. And uh, as I say, that boat was 60 foot by 11 foot wide and would carry up to about 30 tons. But on the river, they were pulled by men, not by horses. <laughs> But we had a stable, you see the big warehouse in the background and more warehousing on the left. Stabling for over a hundred horses there. If you had a boatload of material, say, to take to London, you hired a horse off the Salisbury family, dropped him off in the stables there, someone would hire him and bring him back to Charlotte again. So it all works, you know, really well. Now, uh, the boat we've just seen was called Hope. Now, twice a year, the ladies scrubbed the boat out. They borrowed the barrels off the brewery to put planks on to sit on, sacks to put on the planks. Uh, you'll see the canvas sits stretched over the back part of the boat. Boys at the front, girls at the back, there's uh, old Fred Hallam there. Um, oh. Captain Darbish is somewhere on there. Let's go on to the next one. Jeff, is that yeah. the Fred Hallam, the greengrocer yeah. from Chilwell Way? Easton. Yes. Easton. Wow. I'm sure. I'm sure it's yeah. uh, relative. Yeah. A little sharp, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, we have two. One was. Oh I can't think of his name. Excuse me. <laughs> There's old Cronje Webster on the tiller. See all the, yes. the girls and that in the vest. Tom Crowder with his boat on. And they, with a the horse, they borrowed the horse off the, uh, the Cowley Shores of the uh, Salisbury's and proceed up to Western. Well, the squire's wife paid for the clock being put in. I think that was £10. Uh, she also paid for the little organ that's in the gallery there. And um, I've got a, a breakdown of all the costs. Of, uh, there's about three tonne of bells in the bell tower. Uh, from Whitechapel in London, came down from by canal. Why they didn't go to Loughborough, I never know. Mm. Of course, the tailors, we've it. got tailors yeah. there. Oh, yeah. No, oh, uh, Now, the east window there, it, it is rather gorgeous, I must admit. Cost £91 and £30 to fit it. <laughs> we had a super double decker, uh, oh dear, can't think of the name, the uh, 
Mm. Pulpit. 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 Yeah, thank you. But unfortunately, uh, at a later date, someone's removed the lower part to the left hand side of the show. Yes, it's, uh, it's, as I say, it was seating for 500 originally, but we've extended the gallery out, making uh, uh, a rather nice room. Oh, wow. <laughs> he also made cars, not a lot, but I remember one for Saturdays when I wasn't at school, I don't know about, about nine or ten. We got a farm at Hemington as well. And Dad would say, uh, there's 40 sheep up in Oysterdale, but all the fields have got them. Uh, you can have my dog. Uh, I want them bringing him back to Shadow. Can imagine a lad my age on the A6 with about 40 sheep <laughs> <laughs> coming over Cavendish <laughs> uh, Well, uh, the dog stayed behind. He, he kept them all in order behind. I walked in front, closing all the gates so they didn't sneak into a gate and uh, for never an accident. But uh, there's a, a well-known, uh, it's a bit hazy, there's a shop in there with a boat on and if you've heard of a renowned Trent fisherman called F.W.K. Wallace, he lived in a bungalow on stilt from the side of the Trent and uh, he was quite uh, an expert, I gather. In fact, some of his cased fish that he caught, if, if they were real snorters, he'd have them stuck to the case, had made up to a thousand pounds in the tail. He made fishing rods and supplied fishing tackle to the fishing club there. And uh, he made a rod called the Wallace Wizard and um, my wife had an antique shop in the village for quite a few years and um, I, we knew, uh, I knew the well, word Lowry's Germans and one of the Germans was the same age as me. His father had got a small farm in Bavaria and uh, he, he was uh, billeted in the house, a lovely chap. In fact, we had a 23rd birthday party together at, uh, at uh, Avenue Farm at Amberston. And so, 1948, 48 to 49, in my trusty little 10 year old Austin 7, proceeded to drive up to Bavaria and uh, stayed with him for a fortnight. Uh, uh, it was the first of my grand tours. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, Jack, is he still alive? No, he no. died unfortunately about three years ago. But they, uh, they had the village pub, for want of a better word. It was just one room in the farmhouse. And he took me to his brewer friend, our equivalent to a landed family, you know, a modest 2,000 acre estate, a big beer garden, brewery. And they also, what I didn't tell you right to the start with, I was appalled. They took me round the village and they were still ploughing with bullocks. I, I've never seen anybody plough with a bullock before. And they're cleverer than we are, you know, <laughs> because I said, why has he only got one line? Um, well, he said, watch him. He got to the end, pulled it once, the bullocks turned right, when he got back to his nail, pulled it twice and they turned the opposite way. <laughs> and I thought, well, <laughs> you think you're clever. You <laughs> but it was a marvellous experience. Uh, Wind Chapel. We had a gorgeous little chapel. Unfortunately, it's gone the way of a lot more of our chapel. Lack of uh, attendance and what have you and the Harvest Festival 1899. Uh, the little organ on the left supposedly came off the grand staircase at Topwell Hall. Uh, we didn't know quite what would happen to it, but unfortunately 
it was acquired by Repton School and uh, I think they restored it. The Manor, it's a nursing home today. Uh, oh dear, I've forgotten the name of the owner. Never mind. It had a Edwardian extension on the uh, uh, air garden entrance. Also, there's a large billiard room been added on the right there. But it's a lovely 18th century building, the main part. Now, they said that Humber Keels couldn't get to Shadlow. There's a Humber Keel and Landing Timber at Ellison Woodworks in the village. <laughs> the warehouse in the background, by now, uh, or then, was converted into a mill driven by a steam engine, hence the clouds of steam and the tall chimney for the boiler. But, uh, as I say, they uh, they decided. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, most of the buildings there were corrugated iron, and uh, they were built by the Ellis family. Of course, they were, were quite extensive drawing and supply doors and windows and everything, but. They've moved up to Castle Donington now. Mm. Another shot of the major ship. This, these were from photographs taken in the 20s. And uh, I, as I say, I was uh, a late arrival. I, you can just see 